All right, for uh, for anyone that is interested, uh, I'm starting a stream to show what it looks like if you wanted to take an STL model, typically used for uh, 3D printing, and instead you wanted to import it into Blender, give it a paint job, and then um, turn it into an asset that you can import into Tabletop Simulator. So right now I'm doing the summons for the Artificer uh, community class. It's uh, not part of the standard official Gloomhaven game, it's fan-made content, um, but it's part of the Crimson Scales unofficial expansion and uh, really cool class. So this is actually a summon that's from an item, not from one of the abilities. And uh, this is the last summon that we have for the class. So let's, uh, let's jump in and get started. <clears throat> so I have uh, all the different files I've been using for the other summons here, and I have sort of a starting file that just has the base that I've been using for the others. So there's my starting file, and first thing I need to do is import the STL file of the scrap collector. Now these are much bigger uh, than the base here, so I have to really shrink it down in size. And uh, typically 0.075 is a pretty good scale uh, for what I've been finding these minis were by default. And uh, I do have to raise up this so it sits on top of the base. Uh, I've been finding that this is typically 0.24. And uh, the way I have these designed when I bring them in, I want the Y to be in the front, and so I need him facing that way. So I'm gonna swing him around. We'll uh, slide him a little bit this way. And that looks pretty good for placement. Let me just uh, share this link with some people. So back to Blender here. Uh, so now I have my model in. Now one of the first things that I want to do is I want to use a, um, a modifier called Decimate. And I have to do this while I'm in object mode in order for it to work correctly. And this will tell me how many different faces, which is basically the, the side of a polygon, uh, this model has. And it's about half a million. And that's a lot, and uh, you know, for something that's this small on the table, we don't need it to be that detailed, and uh, it's going to make it easier for us to create a texture, and also easier on uh, the computers of everybody running these if I bring that down. Uh, so I'm going to bring it down to about 20% of that, so I'll put 0 0.2. <clears throat> And you can see it drop down to uh, 89,000. And it looks basically just as good. Uh, you'll see that maybe the ball isn't quite as round, but I actually kind of like the look of it for these bots because it gives it sort of like a hammered metal look. So um, yeah, so that'll, that'll help out there. Now that that's done, we are gonna go into edit mode. And we need to select the scrap collector. And uh, we need to create a UV mesh. Um, what this does is it basically takes the 3D model and it unwraps it flat. And it assigns um, basically each, each face from the polygon onto a flat surface so that you can then paint and adjust your texture however you want. And um, you know, it basically allows you to paint and texture onto the, 
onto the model. So there's something called a smart UV project, which uh, does most of this work for us. An island is basically how much space will exist between each surface. So uh, I am going to put a little bit of space. I've found that if I don't do that, I get a, a lot more overlap and bleed uh, from, you know, looking at the texture where uh, one facet will bleed over to another. And then when if you if you paint on one part of the model, it'll sort of show up on a different part of the model. And um, that's not good. And we also want to scale to bounds, which means that this UV map will sort of stretch out if we put a larger texture on, which we are going to do. So this will just take a second to go through. to go down and I'm going to create a material for the scrap collector. material and the base color I'm actually going to replace with an image texture you'll see this turns black by default uh, but I actually have a few that I've been using and I'm gonna use the starting texture here and I didn't actually get my UV map done let's go back and there we go Should be done soon. This one's taking a little bit longer than they normally take. So you can see all of these orange areas here are just different parts of the selected model and they're now mapped onto this texture. And uh, if I go into texture paint mode, I can actually see what that texture looks like. But I'm actually going to use a different texture. And right now, this probably looks more like camo than uh, metal, but that's because I don't have any of the metal properties on yet for the material. And it transforms pretty quickly. So I've been finding for this, I like setting metallic to 0.9 and roughness to 0.3. Um, and that gives it a much better look. So here's my starting model, and now it's just up to me to paint it uh, with some you know, different textures and colors or whatnot to make it look good. So here's my reference here. I usually keep this up on my second monitor and uh, just gives me an idea of, you know, what I want the colors to look like. Uh, it looks like most of this I'm actually going to go a darker brown. Uh, the coins I'm going to make a 
more of a gold. Same thing with the eyes there. There's some black dots here. Uh, there are some lighter uh, bulbs back here, as well as this little doodad here that will uh, we'll color that up darker with the uh, light blue and white lines there. All right, so <clears throat> let me start by painting the body. Um, in order to paint, we're going to go to this texture here. And uh, one thing I would suggest for most things when I'm painting, instead of a mix uh, paint, I'm actually going to use uh, color. And that's going to maintain the texture in the background. It's just going to change the hue of it. Um, this way here, you'll still get that look. It just be a little bit of a different color. And then this is a standard palette. And as I go through, if there's any um, any colors that I find that I'm using for a model, I'll I'll sort of add them and it'll bring them down the bottom this way here. It's easy for me to find them and use them again. So... Let's see. I think because this is a dark brown, I actually am probably going to have to paint over. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to do something a little, a little different here. Uh, I am going to paint over it, but I'm going to do something a little wild. So... Let's bump up the strength. I'm going to pick a color that is definitely not normally in the range of this. And I'm just going to color over the texture. And probably have no idea what I'm doing or why I'm doing this, but it'll make sense soon. It's actually going to be a faster way to do what I want to do. I'm going to bring this texture into Photoshop and darken it up a bit. So, That looks pretty good to me. Now that new texture is in here. And now I have less to play with here. Alright, so...
going to be a bit of a challenge because everything is uh, dark now. But I can lighten this up a little bit with some white. One of the biggest things you got to be careful here with is when you're painting like this, make sure there's nothing behind where you're painting because if you spray over, think of it like spray paint, like it'll get on what's behind there. So we don't want that. You can always clean stuff up if you need to, but try to keep that to a minimum. And we'll draw the area we don't have to lighten up. And again, the reason we're lightening this is because we want the color from the gold to show up more. Because right now it's uh, pretty dark on the texture. Actually have a drawing tablet which is supposed to make precision here a lot easier than with a mouse but uh I just haven't gotten used to it yet so I'm sticking with the mouse right now Like most art programs, including Photoshop, you can actually increase the radius of your spray with the um, left and right brackets on the keyboard. But I find if you go too big, uh, at least with my computer, Blender seems to really struggle trying to paint a large surface all at once and uh, kind of tends to lock up a bit on me. Uh, that reminds me. Save this. Probably more of a gold than what's actually in the art. I, think I want a bit more of a bronze, so I am going to kind of touch it up a little bit. But... Good to get skill. These right here, 
almost look like light bulbs and uh see I actually oversprayed here a little bit so I'm gonna undo that. So, um, if you look at the actual image here, these sort of glow in the middle. They tend to get a little lighter. Um, I can't really copy that exactly, uh, but what I want to try to do is pick an angle that I think people are going to look at them, which is probably sort of like a top-down angle like this. Try to do outsides and sort of go more of an orange. from underneath as well. And then come in and lighten with white in the middle. And that kind of gives them the effect. It looks like they're glowing there. A lot of these techniques that I'm using are things that I sort of picked up from real life mini painting. And I'll tell you, Control Z is a lot better uh, and a lot easier than trying to fix it when you make a mistake with a paintbrush. So, all right, those look pretty good. Um, these, I guess we can go. these here. spray there again. You can see so the paint didn't really cover all this. Some of that's just because of the way the UV wrap was limited with the texture size and like if you were doing this for real you wouldn't have one 3D model for everything. Like you would have different models for different things and that would allow you to have a different texture on each part of it. But breaking that apart would be very difficult from one solid file and uh, it's just not worth it. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, I like that you made this an item too because it's, it's, uh, it's pretty neat. Um, Summon that I think anyone would have fun using. this. I'm gonna paint this whole thing for now. Uh.
I am by no means a uh, professional. I just started figuring out how to use Blender myself. Um, used it for a handful of other things before, but this is by far the most I've ever used it. So don't be surprised if there are things that I'm doing that there's a better or faster way to do. You'll notice that some of this color is kind of disappearing again as I'm going over here again, because it's because on the UV map there's some overlap. Um, these things are such small details that it's, you know, I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist, but pretty hard for anyone to notice any of those small things, so. Alright, see, like, this thing's gonna be sitting on the table. <laughs> There's no way you're gonna see that stuff, so. Uh, that looks pretty good. <clears throat> Put my reference here again. So helmet has a little bit of like reddish orange shading. Um, obviously there's different lighting too, but this stands out a bit to me. So I'll go through and do that. This seems to be painted black. So I'll fill that in. I think it's just this and the coins, really. I'm doing these, I find it usually works best if I do a little bit at a time. This right here, if I do get one of those sort of bleed overlap areas, I don't have to undo as much. Funny is actually the Coins inside are more silver. So we have the five there, I'll keep gold. Shade of gray doesn't matter because again, this is just giving it color. It doesn't affect the uh, brightness or anything. <clears throat> okay, most of these I've done haven't had this many small little details, so. Still not taking a lot of time, but okay. So Very subtle with this.
See, I have a big brush. I'm painting a lot of stuff right now. It's starting to hang up a bit on me. Hey, Bob's like cheese. Mm. Yeah, the fun part will be when we get into, uh, some of the shading stuff that I do. Metal texture helps with that too. Sort of does that automatically, but uh I like to make it more pronounced by adding in some black paint or white paint to hi help highlight and low light some parts. go through and uh, fill in the scratches a little bit too. All right, so I found this color works pretty well for an initial coat on this, uh, this blue. <clears throat> and then I'll go through with more of a white. So do a mix paint. nice thing about some of these too is actually kind of okay if you overpaint because it's kind of glowing so you would naturally get some of those uh, colors bleeding over anyway yeah they're gonna be on the workshop um, I think uh, I don't know if they're gonna wait for the 1.3 version to come out include them in the update um, and I know there's some work right now to uh, continue building in some of the crimson scales stuff uh, directly into the mod and 1.3 is a lot better for that it's got some really nice um, custom content support where you can just drop a bag in the table and uh, it can be scripted to just add it right into your game Alright. 
So now I got my little doodad there. Do the same thing on the other side. Um. Yeah, Bob, I've done this for some of the other classes too, so I don't know if you've been paying attention to any of the classes that are out there, but uh, Painted Ruin Maw, I did uh, Shard Render, um, there's a beta class called Core, uh, that was the first one I did, it went really good. And... But there's a handful of others that people have asked me to do all go through and do after. Almost done with this class. Not really worried about credit, but uh it's appreciated. There was something else I wanted to do before I went into shading, but maybe not. <clears throat> uh, I think I wanted to make these a little bit more... Not quite as gold, so that they stand out from... Coins there a bit more. scratches that's the last part <laughs> and then we'll do shading so scratches I've been doing something about 70 percent Something in the groove there. 
just to help highlight them and make them pop out a bit. Only the big ones. I'm not going to go through and do all those little ones. Tabletop Simulator actually has pretty decent lighting anyway, so some of that stuff will just sort of show up on its own. Is anyone converting Artificer over to Frosthaven style yet? Um, I'm assuming Crimson Scales is exclusively Gloomhaven style. may not work well. Hmm. 
This is, uh, these are some of the common areas where we get overlap with the texture. We're so good. I think we can do some uh, shading now. So I'll keep this as darkened, uh, but I like to go down pretty low. And again, I'll use this reference to kind of get an idea. So all around this head, we want to make a nice dark shadow. The underbody will have a nice shadow, and then underneath the arms and legs. Uh, okay. Kind of try to blend it so that it's darker near the top or uh, in the darker part of the shadow. So I'll go over that more times. That shadow won't extend all the way up there. And it should be on the underside as well a bit. thing about this is I can just go right underneath the model and I can sort of just paint because anything that I can see from underneath would be in shadow. That makes it a nice little cheat. There is. Um, version 1.3 of TTS Enhanced supports uh, a, a separate scenario builder. And uh, right now the custom, the Crimson Scales mod uses memory bags to load out all the scenarios, but they'll be integrated. So just like a normal scenario, when you drop Crimson, Crimson Scales, once it's, um, once it's completed, they'll just show up in the scenario list like anything else. I actually haven't touched Crimson Scales yet because I've been waiting for my physical copy and uh, want to play with my home campaign group.
some exhaust pipes on this one too. Yeah, 1.3 is going to be awesome. I've been playing with the beta for a little while now, and that context menu is everything. It completely speeds up the game, not having to go to tokens for everything. All right, what do we think? I think we're good here. Let me darken this draw a little bit. We're good. <coughs> All right, so the blender part is done. Now I have to save my texture. <coughs> and I have to export my model. I have to select all three layers. So I have my uh, base that can be colored. Then I have that rocky piece that's on top of it. And then the scrap collector. Uh, so again, I have all three selected. Save this. And now I need to export this as an FBX file. Uh, don't ask me what any of this stuff does. It's just in a tutorial that I read back when I was doing some photogrammetry. But uh, this, set, this path mode is set to copy. We check both these off and we select only mesh. I have it set to minus E forward Y up. And uh, I'm going to go put this in the examples file. Or examples folder of my Unity Hub directory.
that could be done with Blender. Pretty quick from here. Uh, so now we'll go into Unity Hub. I just found that file. I'm going to create a new scene. Don't care about camera. Light gets annoying with some shadows. And I'm going to go... And... Here's my scrap collector. Uh, I'm going to unpack this. And... Uh, Scale-wise, I usually end up setting this to... first create a collider. Um, a collider is something that uh, defines sort of the physics of an object. So this is the invisible shape that other things would bump into in order to collide with this item. Um, so if you have two minis and they hit against each other, it's actually the colliders that are touching that's causing the physics engine to recognize that. Uh, but I don't want to be able to see this, so I have to remove these components, and I need to add a physics mesh collider in here. Uh, 1.2 scale for the X and Z is pretty standard. That gets me to roughly the size of the token that I need. Uh, the 1.2 position and scale, these numbers should match for what I'm doing, but these sort of adjust based off of uh, what gets me to the top of the mini. So first let me go back to my scrap collector here. Um, I'm going to set this to, let's say, 0 0.8. Uh, that looks pretty good. So this collider fills up most of it, and but it's way too tall. So let's say 0 0.9 and 0 0.9. Been doing this a while. Um, so that gets me basically right to the top of the mini. So if you stack something on top, like a token or something like that, it actually sit right here, and the colliders would determine that. Uh, I need to put this base as the top uh, object within this this uh, directory here, because the first layer is the one that gets tinted when you use the tint feature in Tabletop Simulator. So I want that piece to actually be tinted important that be first um the last piece i don't know if this is a bug or if it's just the way that it sort of works with uh unity but the the, the material that it brought in is a standard material if you remember i set the metallic and uh, the roughness which is sort of the inverse of smoothness none of that carries over when i bring it in here so i have to sort of recreate the material here which isn't hard but it's kind of annoying um so, I need to create a material. And... Scrape collector, that's not right. Um, and then again, I've been finding... Metallic 0.9 and smoothness 0.7. I remember it was 0.3 before that was roughness, so you have to do it backwards. Um, and now this material I can drag and I can drop it right on the collector, and you'll see it's nice and shiny. Uh, it is not going to be the shiner in Tabletop Simulator, but um, that's looking a lot better now. And. I don't think I'm going to do any effects. I've been trying to follow them. I know there's some exhaust pipes, but if I don't see it on the art here, I haven't been doing it. So, um, yeah, so we'll just stick with that. <clears throat> I'm going to take my scrap collector. There's a folder in here called prefab, uh, prefabs. I need to drag. All this has to be in the folder together here. Again, this base needs to be first. Uh, and then I'm going to put my scrap collector down here in my prefabs folder. And then I have to name this, uh, which there's a bit of a bug here. If I go to new and start typing, nothing happens. I have to click off and then go into new again. Uh, it was only on this version of Unity. This is an older version and 
again, the tutorial I read specifically said this version was the only one, at least at that time, that worked correctly with Tabletop Simulator. I'm guessing there's newer versions out that do, but this, this seems to work for me. Alright, so this asset bundle is going to be called Artificer Scrap Collector. Uh, let me save this. And now that that's here, uh, if I if I had any effects, they would be a separate prefab. So you would have them as two separate files. You could see some of these have these little blocks here. Um, so now that I have that. I can build my asset bundles. It rebuilds all of the asset bundles in my project, so it takes a little bit of time, uh, but I do find it easier to be able to hop back and forth to these different objects, so it's worth it. This doesn't take too, too long. It'll be done soon. Tabletop simulator. Gonna set it as a figurine so that if it gets knocked over, it goes back upright. Uh, this just controls the sound when it clanks into something else, so we're gonna set it to metal. If there were any effects, I would have to bring the effects in under the secondary URL, but there are none, so I leave that blank. We import, falls through the table, but then it'll pop up here. And there's a little Scrappy. And he's good to go. Take the tint hex from over here. Technically, probably shouldn't have this color because it's an item. Uh, but we're going to leave it like that for now. So, um, yeah, we're, uh, we're done with the summons here. Um, you can see the, the colors look a lot better in here than they probably did before. This is pretty close to, uh, the colors of our model. And I think we're pretty good. So, I'll wrap up the stream now. And I uh, hope you enjoyed watching this, and if you have any questions, you can always feel free to leave a comment. If you like my stuff, uh, the obligatory like and subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching. Take care.